So it's very nice of you to come here after the bubble accident. So uh, I hope uh, the rain will stay in the clouds uh, for just uh, a little longer. I'm going to talk about Mona Lisa. I have 30 minutes. If you have any questions, just try to interrupt me. Uh, I hope to address them during the talk, unless uh, I'm running out of time. So um, I'm told not to wander this on this side, so I'm probably going to stand here. So this is what I'm going to present, the agenda I'm uh, presenting now. Uh, something about Mona Lisa, who knows the painting? Well, that's nice to see a lot of hands. Um, I'm going to tell you what Mona Lisa has to do with the traveling salesman problem, if you don't know it already, what the relation with the P versus MP problem is. And uh, we'll come to the TSP art, which is actually the, the main subject of this talk. So the Mona Lisa. Um, she's very well known, I guess. Everybody raised his or her hand. Um, but she's a mysterious woman. Uh, as you know, firmly known because of the enigmatic smile um, just shown at the bottom here. Uh, there's a lot of talk why she smiles like this. There's even a, a whole Wikipedia page with a lot of conspiracy theories why she's smiling. But I think I know why she's smiling. And it has to do with another detail of the painting, namely this road. Um, and why is this important? Well, you have to li kno know a little bit more about Mona Lisa. So who, who kno knows the details about the person behind the portrait? Again, this is good, because then I can tell you the next slide. The portrait is of Lisa Gardini. She uh, lived uh, in the Renaissance period in Italy, in Florence. Uh, Gardini was a very famous family, although at uh, the age of, um, of Lisa, she, the, the, the family ran out of money. So she married Francisco del Giocondo, uh, which was a very uh, rich, m modestly ri rich uh, silk uh, merchant. Um, and uh, when, I when I was... Um, Looking up Mona Lisa, I, uh, I was very nice to see that she married out of love. So that appeals to my uh, more romantic side. But what do you do if you are modestly wealthy? You have to uh, look at the expenditures you have. So that's, uh, that's why the following problem comes in. This is Venice, not Florence. Um, and let's say that uh, Lisa has to uh, go and talk to a lot of uh, merchants and uh, salesmen and have to travel through Venice, through all these places. Um, some are uh, interested buyers, some are sellers of silk. And the question is, if you have to visit all these points, what is the most efficient route to, uh, to do this? Does anybody have a clue? No, me neither, because that's basically the main point of my article, of my, my talk. Um, the, the task of finding for a finite number of points, the best route through the points, uh, the shortest route, um, that's actually the, called the traveling salesman problem. Um, and this problem is, is well known. It's actually not invented by Mona Lisa, but uh, you can imagine that it's used uh, in, the, in that time already. But it's formally stated by uh, a mathematician, Hamilton. Um, so this is a little bit about my background. I'm a mathematician. mathematician trained. So the question is, how would you solve this? Um, and please raise your hand again like you did when you was asked, do you know the Mona Lisa? How would you solve the problem? Yeah, so that's, that's a the very good suggestion. Try all combinations, and record the shortest. Um, that's actually my answer as well. And interestingly enough, we, as developers, we as mathematicians, we as a, a, a species, don't know another better solution in a p particular sense of the word. So, uh, although this is a, is a good algorithm to solve this problem, or it is an algorithm, let's say, uh, let's say the least of that, it's not very uh, nice to do that. And why not? Well, let's imagine a one-point city. The, the problem will become trivial. There's only one possibility to check. Um, and let's say that we can do that in one second. As the number of points we have to visit grows, it's in the left-hand column, uh, the possibilities grows, which is um, extended like very fast. Uh, and the duration, I've made the, the, the second line the average yawn, 
I hope not I'm all going to yawn you to death with this code, but it's uh, amazingly how long, it, how fast uh, the problem gets out of hand. So, for example, with uh, three, three cities in the tour, you have to have six possibilities, and you can yawn at a time, averagely. But if you take 15 towns, I can, can't even pronounce the number in English, um, but it's roughly three centuries before you're finished checking all the possibilities. So this, this is an inherent difficulty problem, and this is not only the problem with the, the, with the possibilities, because the, who has the GS conf shirt? Who has it on? Nobody? Well, there's a, oh. There's a, a Rubik's Cube on the, on the front, and the Rubik's Cube has a roughly a similar amount of possibilities as uh, 15 points of the traveling salesman problem, but some po people can solve it in 20 seconds. So there's a really different different problem than the traveling salesman problem, and that's a very interesting property which I'd like to talk now. So who heard of the P equals MP problem? Who knows what it means? Okay, well that's interesting, but that's precisely what I want to talk about. So there's a famous unsolved problem in computer science, famous for a lot of reasons. Uh, just recently there was a movie about the traveling salesman problem, um, which um, as a subject, this problem, so that's why it's famous. And there are other popular reference to it. But what does it mean, actually? Well, we have to explain the two different P's in there. So what does P mean? So let's, let's assume we have a function addition. Everybody knows how to do that. And we're going to profile this method on the following data set. So uh, the profile method is not shown, but it will tr um, run a few times of this function with the data to 3 and 2, so it will uh, ex uh, uh, answer with 5, I guess. So this is actually very interesting, because uh, what I was expecting, and this is also nice too when you're preparing a talk, is that the, the amount of time to perform these runs would grow. It's actually not the case, so I have to talk to somebody who knows the VM a, a lot better than me. Why this is, but you can imagine if you're doing this calculation in your hand, you have to, for example, let's take 31 and 27. You have to first add 1 to 7 uh, to, to form 8, and then 3 to 2 to form 5. So that's the answer. Um, and if you do this for longer and longer numbers, you have to take longer and longer time, but it grows nicely. Um, so the P stands here for polynomial. So who knows what a polynomial is? Okay, so polynomial informally means efficient. It's not entirely the case, but as the input grows, so if you have larger and larger numbers, let's say we have a, a two, two, more, two more digits, then the, the, uh, then the runtime of the algorithm doesn't grow very much. Actually, so let's, if the numbers grow twice as large, the runtime will grow twice as large for this case. So that's polynomial, and, and generally this means a computer can solve this efficiently. Um, it's obviously the case for addition, but there are, there are other examples. So I just told you what P means. So does anybody want to guess what NP means? Yeah, so the, the obvious answer would be not polynomial, and that's not the case, unfortunately. So um, we'll go to the next slide. What does NP mean? This, it means actually non-deterministically polynomial. So but the end doesn't have a relation to not p. And I'm going to try to explain what that means. Again, we're going to profile a function. Uh, this time, there is a verification of factorization. So let's say somebody knows their numbers very well and can call out the factorization in prime factors of 6. So does anybody know the factorization of 6? Yeah, 2 times 3 equals 6. So you're going to be my oracle which whispers the answers in my ear. Because when I'm verifying the result, I don't, do have to, I don't have to do the hard work, I can do the easy work. So um, if somebody asks, what are the factors of 27, my oracle would answer. Three times three times three. And I can check in my head, three times three is nine, times three is three is 27. Yeah, my oracle is very good. So this is, this is the case with MP. Um, there is a, a question, what is the product 
uh, of uh, what's the factorization of a certain number, and somebody can give me the answer, and all you have to do is can, uh, can I check it? Is this clear uh, until now? Somebody's not in, that's good. Okay, so informally, an NP means there's a problem, and I can check the answer in a polynomial time. So I can efficiently check the answer. So the famous question is, about, is as follows. Oh, there's a slide there. Um, is every problem that can be verified efficiently, like factorization, if you have an oracle, you can check the result, is in itself efficiently solvable? Well, who knows the answer to this question? Really? <laughs> there is no answer. Well, that's, that's, that's more probably the, the best answer today, because uh, nobody knows for sure. So this is actually an open problem, which is uh, formed in the, in the 60s, when computer science really took off, and nobody knows for sure. Uh, it's actually one of the most famous Millennium Prize problems. Does anybody know the Cray Institute? The Clay Institute is a mathematical institute founded by a billionaire which has money to spare and he wants to solve seven problems. The n equals mp problem is one of them. And if you can solve it, you will win a million dollars. So that's why it's interesting to work on this problem. And actually it's very interesting because the traveling salesman problem is an example that is known to be easily verifiable. Uh, because if somebody gives you a route and you can check uh, what the length is, um, but it's not easy to do this, actually. I'm not sure what's happening now. Um, so if you're at work and you need to, to blow up your mind, and uh, uh, you can work on, uh, on, for example, Minesweeper, because Minesweeper is also a problem which is known to be NP-complete. And if you can solve it efficiently, you can win a million dollars. So if your boss walks in and sees you solving Minesweeper, you can say, no, 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 I'm doing research. So that would be an interesting problem to uh, to stay. The reason why another reason why it's famous is because um, XQCD did a, a comic on it. So um, brute force solution, the big O notation says uh, the runtime, something over about the runtime. So n faculty, that's a long time. You can do it a little bit better, but still, it's a long time. So nobody knows an efficient algorithm to solve this problem. So. If you're walking out of this bubble, um, you have to remember one thing. If you know something that, uh, that falls in the class of an MP complete, um, then you can do something interesting, because there is no known efficient algorithm yet, so you have to do other things. So what does it have to do with TSPR? Well, a traveling salesman tour has an interesting property. So let's assume that uh, there's a route, this is a, a small part of a route through a lot of cities. So for example, uh, the route travels along the bubble, uh, enters uh, there through the, the left leg, crosses over to the other city and down over the ground and up uh, again. So this wouldn't be an optimal solution because there's a shortcut. shortcut. Does anybody see it already? Yeah, well, there's some points. Oh, sorry, I have to click this, I guess. So you can take a shortcut. So if you're entering from the upper left, instead of going down the other side, you can go straight down. And this will actually be shorter because you, you don't have to travel this leg and this leg. So this is shorter there and this is shorter. So you have a smaller route. So this is an interesting problem. In any rendition of a traveling salesman problem, you will never find crosses. And this is a nice aesthetic property that um, you actually can fill out a form that never touches itself. You can trace it with one pen without lifting your hand. So this is a very arty in, uh, aspect of, the, of, of a route that, is a traveling s that solves the traveling salesman instance. So how can we use that to render the Mona Lisa? Well, first, uh, you have to stipple. It's actually a technical term, I guess, the Mona Lisa. And Unfortunately, I tried this out with my browser because I wanted to do this presentation in my browser. And it is a hard problem to stipple uh, uh, an image. So I could only use a thousand points. And then that, um, this is a, uh, an example which I didn't use, uh, which isn't formed in the browser. And then you can ob obviously see that this isn't an optimal tour because there are crosses here. Um, 
So that's a bit of a shame, and it's a, an indication that the traveling salesman problem is a hard problem to solve. But if you take this offline and invest more time, because um, I tried it with uh, 10,000 points and it just freezes my browser, so I took this offline, and um, this is actually an example of a rendition of the Mona Lisa solved as a traveling salesman problem and painted the tour. And uh, I think this is a very nice example of how uh, fundamental research in mathematics and computer science combined with uh, art can form beautiful pictures. So, um, is this clear what I'm talking about? Great. There's a question or? Okay, the question was, what points are you visiting in the picture? So, first of all, you take an image and uh, you make a black and white version of it and then probably you adjust uh, the brightness of it and you throw a lot of points at the image and uh, you m form the image by the darker regions the, the image will clump together, the dots will clump together and in the brighter uh, regions the images are, are sparser. So actually these this um, this makes a rendition of the of the image, just like the the last slide, the previous slide. So this you can see the Mona Lisa in here, and if if you have more points, the more points will grow together to form darker regions. So these points actually are used to solve the traveling salesman problem. Does that answer your question? Great. This one. Um, so the. Um, the, the, so the mention is this isn't an optimal solution. This probably isn't the optimal one. That's correct, because um, this is actually uh, up on a website to try out your hard problems, and uh, it's solved because there's no crossings. You can see that, but the problem. Uh, so you don't know you're, because it's so hard to do correctly answer the question. Is this the optimal tour? It probably isn't this one. So that's correct. It's not optimal. Other questions? Because it's time for questions now, so it will be nice. So if you don't have questions, I have a question for you. So this is, um, you're probably not going to see the, the result of this, but um, I've, I have a small daughter. She's a year and a half, and she's great. And um, although I don't want to push her into a technical job, it would be great if she wanted to pursue that. And um, if you're a female technical person, I would ask you to go to this website and give a, write a letter to Sophie, which is a year and a half, with some advice. Because I think it's very hard for women in this society, with a lot of men in the technical society, to become a technical person and, uh, and work on that. So um, this, this repository uh, would be my present for her 12th birthday, that if she wants to be a technical leader in this field, that she has some advice from f female role models. So um, if you take the time, if you know, a female role model. So um, that's uh, basically it. Are there any more questions for Don? No. Cool. All right. We'll Thank get set much. up for our next speaker. Julie.